All right, YouTube, this is Detroit's HPTV coming to you this Monday morning. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Over the weekend, they had a story, and the story was about how D.L. Hughley comes out and attacks Janet Jackson because J Janet Jackson says she allegedly heard that Kamala Harris is not black. She's East Indian. Now, everybody heard that because we've heard Kamala Harris actually say it out of her own mouth. So we've all heard it at this point. But what would make D.L. Hughley attack Janet Jackson for something that is widely known in the black community? We all have footage of Kamala Harris saying she's Southeast Asian. She said she was the first Indian senator, the first Indian attorney general. She said it plenty of times. Everybody knows she didn't start using the black card until she had eyes set on the White House. But at what point will these Democratic shields stand down? You got Roland Martin attacking Michaela Montgomery, you know, this old boule, old enough to be her daddy, attacking her because she's conservative. You got Steve Harvey pandering and just towing the company line, him and Ricky Smiley. You know, it's a problem with these boulets that follow Oprah because why are they so adamant about the rest of us voting Democrat? Don't we have the right to vote for whoever we want to vote for? And doesn't it make sense that we will vote for policies that we want? Okay, think about this. I, had, I was talking to a friend of mine. He's approximately my age or maybe older. I'm almost 60, right? So he's like, man, I don't understand why you're not voting for Kamala. So I said, I don't understand why you are. Because at this point, all you voting for is late term termination of babies. You're voting for re-gender assignment for children. You're voting for open borders and you're voting for continual wars now just alone i will vote for a conservative over her because i want to vote i personally want to vote against regender assignment for children i personally want to vote for late-term abortion i personally want to vote for closing the border because as a grandfather the first thing when I look at my daughter or my granddaughter is, man, I sure wish they could get a late term abortion if they need one. Think about this as a grandfather. You're voting for the benefit of your granddaughter or your daughter to get a late term abortion. That's what's most important to you as a man. Come on now. We got to think this through. We are definitely in a battle against good, evil, and spiritual wickedness in high places because they want to make you think that the lie is the truth and the truth is the lie. I watched a commercial about Project 2025 so many times and I see it. And it's almost like they're saying a lie so much that they're forcing people to believe it who refuse to accept truth. Trump said he has nothing to do with it. He has Project 47. It comes from the Heritage Foundation. It's a proposal that would have to be implemented, and, and Trump has nothing to do with it. But they keep saying it to black Americans and marketing it to us. What is this preoccupation with black Americans and their vote? It is, you know what it is? It's the Democratic's tool to get a sector of the community who, who they have personally demoralized to vote against conservative values. I'm going to say that again so you can understand it. The Democratic Party has personally, as a party, demoralized you, made you immoral, filled your community with debauchery so that you would always be anti-conservative. You don't want to stop using your substances. You don't want to, you want the freedom to do everything. So they know as long as they keep you in that state of immorality, you would have a problem with anything conservative. Think about that. 
Now, I want you to watch this clip first. And this Oprah Winfrey. Then I'm going to show you the D show you when Monique was talking about D.L. Hughley. Because what would make D.L. Hughley the worst of the kings of comedy had the worst sitcom? What would make him automatically step out and start thinking he's an advocate for the black community when it comes to politics? Him and Ricky Smiley and, and the rest of the boule. See, the boule that Du Bois was talking about, a talented Tim, they was always groomed by the NAACP and those other organizations to be the sellouts, to be the liaison between the power structure and the people. And they are paid handsomely to do their job. And if you look, obviously, at how they're doing their job, why would D.L. Hughley attack Janet Jackson and talk about she has a white woman nose and all of that because she said something that the whole world is saying, majority of the whole world, that people who are not brainwashed, because we know we heard Kamala say that she was Southeast Indian. We know about her birth state, but we know all of this. So what makes him go at Janet Jackson so hard? Why do Ricky Smiley and them say they, I don't like black people. They may, what is their emotional connection to the rest of us getting off the Democratic plantation? These are some supreme gatekeepers and they show you in every way. Now let's watch this first clip. This is Oprah bringing you Kamala out there like she's the kingmaker because she did the same thing with Obama and black people got nothing. Only people got something was the LGBTQ community. But watch her playbook. This is the same book she did, playbook she did with Obama. So this is for 1976, under the 1976 Copyright Act, Education Commentary, and the First Amendment. Check out this. It went exactly as you would have expected. Weak, softball, and provided no fresh insight. Commentators across the globe are mocking the interview, calling it a cringe fest, and slamming its pathetic attempt to mask democratic propaganda as a hard-hitting interview. Sky News All-Stars James Morrow, Erin Molan, and Paul Murray exposed the weirdest moments from the Oprah Kamala interview. <laughs> When you hear the words Kamala Harris and Oprah, hard-hitting interview doesn't exactly come to mind. And you would be right. The Kamala Harris-Oprah interview was a certifiable cringe fest that can only be described as a campaign ad for the Democrats, reveals Sky News All-Star Erin Molan. Now today, Kamala Harris sat down with good friend and arguably America's most famous television host, Oprah Winfrey. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it was as sickening as you'd imagine. The real measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you lift up. And it's, it's, it's important for us. Absolutely. You know, you know, a lot of young Americans, 18 to 34, say that the cost of living is their top issue ahead of the election. Let's take a look. Wall Street's are extremely expensive right now. I don't understand how people are affording life right now. By a long shot, her tax plan is phenomenal. No glaze. Kamala Harris just delivered her new economic plan. And boy, oh boy, is it good for small business owners. You guys, Kamala Harris is going to announce tomorrow a $25,000 tax credit for first-time home buyers. Now, we didn't just get this off the internet afterwards. This was part of the Oprah special. Ms. Molan went on to blast Kamala Harris again, saying she points out the complete obvious in her answers. Now, she did her usual thing as well, of course, pointing out the complete obvious. When I look around at these screens, Oprah, I look at who's in the room, and this is America. This is. This is America. Yes, yes, it is America. No. But despite the questions being blatantly scripted and pre-prepared, Kamala Harris was still caught off guard and stumbled her way through what should have been a very simple answer, reveals Sky News All-Star Paul Murray. She couldn't even follow the script if there was one. 
This was a question that was asked of her by a couple who clearly, you can tell, want to vote for her. Watch in particular the face of the bloke here. We really would love to know what your plan is to help lower the cost of living. Oh, what? Oh, no, you're not fucking mocking me! I, I don't have an answer for this. <laughs> Can you see that? Can we roll again? Watch her face! Watch how frightened this woman is about answering a question in a scripted form that is a advertorial. Okay, <clears throat> now, I should have told you this in the beginning. This is Australian news. I want to show you how we're being paid and seen around the world. This is Australia's news. This is Australia's news. And I wonder what it looks like to the rest of the world to see the whole black community being used as a political football that the Democratic Party wants to control at all costs. Now remember as we continue, this is Australian news. Because she has no answer on this. We really would love to know what your plan is to help lower the cost of living. Uh, wow, leading in the polls. Inevitable according to the 538 model. Well, it's her answer to the scripted question in the scripted room. That should frighten everyone. Again, keep an eye on the bloke here when they start to take shots where the wife is trying to be impressed and he's slowly not, because this is a buffet of words. Yeah, I, first of all, thank you both for being here. And yours is a, a story I hear around the country as I travel. And, um, in terms of both rightly having the right to have aspirations and dreams and ambitions for your family and working hard and finding that the American dream is for this generation and so many recently. I'm going to stop there because clearly at this point you realize she's not answering questions. She's not saying anything. She's not saying anything. But doing a lot of talking. Tell me what y'all get out of this. Far more elusive than it's been. And we need to deal with that. And when asked about the border, a question she's been asked hundreds of times and should be all over as the borders are, she fumbled it reveals Sky News all-star James Morrow. Anyway, the premise of the forum was for Harris to be asked some very basic questions, questions which she still struggled with, even though they're entirely predictable. Here she was being asked about what she'd do about the border. Um, when you become president, what would be your uh, specific yeah. steps? Yeah, of course. <laughs> what would be specific steps to strengthening the border? So it's a wonderful and important question. Um, I, you know, my background was as a prosecutor and I was also the elected attorney general for two terms of a border state. So this is not a theoretical um, issue for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, she's always on about being a prosecutor. But... Kamala Harris also attempted some comic relief during the interview but just ended up embarrassing herself, according to Sky News All-Star Joe Hildebrand. Now, while we're in the U.S., Kamala Harris sat down with Oprah Winfrey for a Night for America Post-Post Forum event on Thursday, where she made this surprising revelation. Did oh, my God, on her I did not know, know that! It's not like it breaks from my house to get shot. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I, I hear that. I hear that. Probably should not have said that. <laughs> but my staff will deal with that later. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm a gun owner, America. Oh, 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 oh. You Republicans don't have to worry about me. Okay, as, as um, uh, James Morrow pointed out this morning, Joe, she has Secret Service protection. She ain't shooting anyone. It's the Secret Service who's going to kill someone. So break into a, right. but, but, well, this is the second time now in a couple of weeks where she has brought up the fact she owns a gun. Right, exactly. This is why I love these. Just, just, well, you know what? I mean, 
I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm a gun owner. And then, like, no one pays any attention. Oh, now I'm going to have to not say it again. I'm a gun owner. Like, it's like it is the most embarrassing part. And cracking. And that's like, right, it's little things that she kind of like. Of, you know, like, I don't, it is, I mean, she just <laughs> does my head in. Like, it just, it, she's just so annoying. And, and this idea that she's got to sort of, you know, let it slip that she's actually just a normal person, like, you and me, and that she's actually this really kind of gung ho, middle of the road, middle America, cowboy hat wearing, horse riding, gun toting. It's just surrounded by celebrities at that event. That's right. Like, like, stop with the celebrities. Like, it is just such uh, a bad look. This is where Hillary Clinton went so horribly wrong and why she lost to Donald Trump. Because when she was hanging out with Beyonce, Trump was holding rallies with workers in Pennsylvania. And Carl is doing the exact same thing. I can't believe it. I mean, I, I, I suppose they need the money and they think they have to get as much money as they possibly can to put together as slick a campaign machine as possible because you can't really have her pretending to be real. But Erin Molan took a more serious tone to her gun owner response, saying, imagine if Donald Trump had given that same answer. Now, just imagine, just imagine that it was Donald Trump sitting there and saying those exact words. Imagine what her response and the rest of the Democrats' response would have been to a line like that. Just imagine. Now, let me leave you with this super powerful exchange. As we have 47 days um, until November 5th, what's on your heart? Freedom to be who you are and just be, to love who you love openly and with pride. Freedom to just Mm. Craving a weight loss solution that actually performs? Hands can help you access weight. Yeah, don't think Oprah had any idea what she meant. Mm. And even Kamala Harris's biggest fan, Oprah, was caught looking very bored and confused with the mindless ramblings at points. Speaking of weird versus normal, my God. How about that interview Kamala Harris did with Oprah? Did you see this? Again, in even the most softball form, Harris was left grasping for answers, laughing nervously, <laughs> and repeating the same set pieces that have been running her entire mini campaign. First, a bit of Harris just talking about, well, who knows? And there's a great moment here when it looks like even Oprah is having a WTF moment. One of the greatest expressions for the love of our country, one of the greatest expressions of patriotism is to fight for the ideals of who we are, which includes freedom to make decisions about your own body, freedom to be safe from gun violence, freedom. Her leading freedom. It's always freedom to have late term termination of your child. Freedom to reassign gender and children. Freedom to come in and out and across the border at random. These freedoms that she is marketing as political policy, who's actually voting for those things? Think about it. Can I have that? <laughs> <laughs> she was looking over his face. What is this woman talking about? Anyway, the premise of the forum was for Harris to be asked some very basic questions, questions which she still struggled with, even though they're entirely predictable. The interview was also slammed by commentators for the snobbish attitude and disconnection from. Well, you get what I'm trying to show you, because this is, and like I said, Australia news. When conservatives say that we, we are becoming the laughing stock of the world, this is how they're reporting over there. And then over here, you still have the pandering and the misinformation coming from the Democratic Party as they attack conservatives based on we're not convinced about Kamala, period. No type of way. You just seen her with Oprah. Softest interview that you can ever get, being interviewed by your buddy. So we're not convinced. And if you question that, they saying you're a fool, you're crazy, you're being attacked. Who made them them overseers? That's why I wanted to show you Monique's clip.
on Club Shay Shay. Because when you listen to what Monique describes coming from D.L. Hughley in Hollywood, it'll all make sense to you. What I'm you see. I'm going to bring this up. I wasn't going to do it. Check it out. But damn it, this is... Check out the message and what Oprah, I mean, what Monique is saying about how D.L. Hughley played the situation. I'm a bro. Look at, look at, uh, Shannon Sharp, Shay Shay, disassociating itself from D.L.'s character. He's letting it be known. Look, I know the guy, but I ain't no friend of his. But y'all traveling in the same circles. You can't, you can't put your stamp on them because what Monique is telling you is something that y'all already know in Hollywood, that these are gatekeepers. These are people that are used by the Democratic Party and other dark, deep state forces to manipulate the minds of black Americans and poor people. He knows that. Now listen carefully what Monique describes from D.L. Hughley. I had a summer job at McDonald's. He was born there. I'm very rich. He's for them. And Monique is hell. Well, I'm going to give you some background. Monique is a very rich if you have a 700 plus credit score, you qualify for Chase's new program where you can access up to a husband didn't. Have you noticed that Monique is outside of their circle with Diddy, Oprah, Tyler Perry, Epstein, Weinstein? She's outside of that circle. So what you noticing about D.L. Hughley is he is the Hollywood version of Roland Martin. He is a democratic attack dog and a gatekeeper. Whatever they got on him that, that makes him fall so much under their control to the point to where he think it's all right to attack Janet Jackson over her comment about Kamala Harris, talk about her nose, you know what I mean? Didn't care nothing that Tito had just passed away or whatever. What, I mean, when you look behind that, you see it is traitorous and treason for him to attack Janet. Why would you attack Janet Jackson? Really, Penny? So hard, just just make that post because she got a different political view than you. You you actually attacking her for a comment she made about Kamala Harris. Y'all got to see that they control these people. Now, I want you to follow what she's saying DL did, you know. He sent the memo and tried to use the memo as a contract. But with a memo, you don't have to sign and agree to it, so it's not a contract. But he's misrepresenting the memo as a contract to people. And you can see that this practice through Hollywood and entertainment has gotten people in some real financial trouble because they're accepting memos as contracts. They're not negotiating, they're not informed, but be DL, this is his practice, obviously. Listen, Monique. Signed to go as the head of enough. I'm gonna stop right there because I'm sure y'all seen the interview. Uh, well, a lot of people did. But the point that I was trying to get you to see about these Oprah Winfrey's and D.L. Hughley's and how they really treat other black people. You know what I mean? D.L. knew that Monique is a strong woman and love her husband. Why would you set her up for a question that asks, would she prefer her husband to sleep with Lee Daniels? or some other person without a comment. You know what I mean? These are grown people with kids. You know what I mean? These are grown black people with kids. And you accept that he said that as if that's journalism, that's media, that's what, this, this is what we do as black people. This is how we talk, about, when we get together, this is what we talk about. We talk about who doing who. We preoccupied with that. We are the deviants of America, huh? Based on the Democratic Shields philosophy. That's why they would have Megan Thee Stallion twerk at a contest. I mean, at a, uh, 
uh, whatever she was having a convention or whatever, they bring out twerkers. Next one, they bring out Lil John. Turn down for what? Can't y'all see that they use these gatekeepers to not only manipulate you to vote, but to pervert you, to undermine your spirituality, to sell your soul. They want you to sell your soul. Just think about what they're asking you to vote for. They keep stressing your woman's right to, but look how they phrasing it. Look how they, 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 they just telling you the most important thing is for a woman to be able to have a late term abortion. As a man, a father, a grandfather, how is that marketable to you? When you look at your granddaughter or your daughter, you say, man, I just, I just sure hope that when she's grown, she can get a late term abortion. Is that what you're thinking? So how are they able to even market that and sell it and sell it to us? Who has made us so spiritually blind that we can't see the obvious? These people are leading us into destruction and hellfire. And I'm going to end on that note. This is Detroit's HPTV coming to you out of Detroit. Support the nonprofit Detroit's Black Thought and Answer Collective. The cash app is in the description. As always, salute to all patriots. Keep your head on the swivel. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.